Hello, welcome to the Mox Marine YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be about installing a uh, Delco EST distributor upgrade or ignition upgrade in place of a Thunderbolt 4 uh, Mercru Mercruiser ignition system. Um, this is not going to be an in-depth series like the last one. Um, I'll put a link to the uh, a series where I go into a lot more of the, uh, the details and theory behind uh, the Delco EST distributor upgrade, but this is going to be a one video on how to do a Thunderbolt 4 instead of a Thunderbolt 5. It's actually much simpler. So I'm going to be stopping this video quite a bit. My shop is on a busy road, so there will be a lot of traffic noise behind me. But, uh, so this is the distributor that came out of this motor. And by the way, this is a brand new motor just rebuilt. I need to put the distributor in it. I left the uh, old priming tool in the back of it. I left the old priming tool back there just to keep that hole covered up. Um, but I'm going to go through how to install this distributor from scratch, just like it was, uh, just like you're just taking the distributor out. So this is a Thunderbolt 4 distributor, and uh, this is this is the distributor that came out of this engine. And uh, this is the module that, that mounts on the side of the distributor, it's Thunderbolt 4, and it's a very simple system, very simple harness. So this harness here went to the ignition coil. The purple is your power to your module. And the gray, you're coming back to the module is what fires the coil. And I'll show you those wires in a second. They're on the, the other wires that match these are on the boat. And then this other harness connector here, this is just, this goes to your distributor. So these two wires here and here plug in right here on the, the pickup inside the distributor. That's what those are for, these two here. This wire here goes to another harness on the front and it goes to your shift kill switch. So the way it works is that the, the shift kill switch grounds this wire, it kills the signal from this module, I mean from this uh, pickup to your module. And that's what kills your ignition for your uh, to allow it to shift out of gear. So this is a much simpler system than the uh, Thunderbolt 5, and uh, so I'm going to be replacing it with a new system. So the new system consists of these parts here. This is a new ignition coil with a bracket, and by the way, I'm going to be making these brackets. This is a, a marine grade ignition module, about 70, 80 bucks. You can get the same, uh, excuse me, not module, coil, this ignition coil. So this ignition coil, in a marine grade with the with this bracket is about 70 80 dollars um, from different places marine marine, uh, marine parts source so forth but you can get the same ignition coil a dr37 for about 20 dollars from rock auto so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be making these brackets and, and by the way the rock auto coils do not come with the mounting bracket so i'm going to be making these brackets special and offer them for sale on my website and then you can buy a coil and bracket for a total of about 40 dollars i may sell the coil too Matter of fact, I might put it together as a complete kit and sell it for $40, $45. But um, as I was saying, this is a new coil, marine coil. It's no different than an ignition coil from a car or truck. But I, do, I did buy these special harnesses to go with it. And those are about $20 from Michigan Motors. I'll, I'll put all these parts in, a, uh, in the description of this video. The distributor is a, uh, it's got a marine ignition module in it and it's brand new. And this will be mounted in the back of the engine. Again, I'll put the part number of that distributor in the description of the video. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and put the distributor in. and uh, I won't hook up the wiring. I'm going to install the distributor and then turn the motor over the starter to build up oil pressure before I actually connect up the ignition system. But before I do that, the first thing you have to do, and I've described this in other videos, is I have to set this motor at top dead center on the number one cylinder so that I can install the distributor in the proper timing. And I've described it in another video, but what I'm going to do is take the oil cup out, oil cap out, Reach in there and feel the uh, rocket arm on number one cylinder. As I rotate the engine, I'll know um, whether I'm at top dead center number one or number uh, four. So I'm going to do that now, and then I'll uh, get back to you. All right, the engine is now at top dead center with a compression stroke. And like I said, the way I did that, I rotate the engine. I felt the uh, intake rocker arm move on number one. When I did that, the line was just past top dead center. I rotated around another 100, uh, 360 degrees. And now it's a top dead center on the compression stroke. So this is the new distributor, about to drop it in. Again, in the previous video, I told you that this is number one, uh, number one spark plug was lined up with approximately a, or a spark plug tower. It's approximately lined up with this, uh, this uh, spark arrestor cloth here, or metal uh, uh, mesh there. So I'm gonna put the distributor, you point the rotor just to the right of that, just to just just tad counterclockwise from there. Just Cause when it drops in these, these helical gears will move that rotor around to the right position. So that's what I'm about to do. I'm gonna drop this in and then mechanically timed. 
Before I drop the stubber in, I wanted you to notice, or I wanted you to see this. Uh, the rotor is pointed uh, just to the, just counterclockwise of that uh, mesh there. But you'll notice also this, this distributor shaft is also pretty much lined up with the rotor tip. That's a, that's very helpful to know. So um, that, that screwdriver slot right there sort of looking thing drops into a slot in the oil pump below. So it needs to be in approximately the same location. So if I'm dropping it in straight like this, that, that slot in the, your, uh, the slot in the oil pump needs to point at about 530, which it does. I just moved it. I don't know if you can see it down in there, right in there. So that's at about the 530 position. Okay, I've run into a little snag. The top of this oil pressure sending unit uh, coupling, fitting, is hitting the bottom of this distributor. So I can't put it in the same location I would normally. So what I'm gonna do is rotate the distributor around approximately 30, it's like about 30, 45 degrees where it normally would. Normally this piece here, or that circle would point straight forward. But it's okay. You can. It's okay to rotate this around as long as you move your spark plug wires with it. So I'm going to readjust the oil pump up below so I can rotate this uh, distributor around, and I'm going to have number one rotor pointed that way, right above. We'll rotate the entire distributor body so that these connectors are pointed straight back. So I miss this, and then this will be over here. So my number one spark plug tower will have to be approximately right here where my fingers at. Okay, it's worked out pretty nice. So I've got the uh, number one rotor rotor. Position for number one pointed right here at the mesh, and you can see that um, I missed the oil thing also. And the distributor is completely seated down in the engine, which means it engaged with the oil pump below. And then I've got this clamp put back on there and tightened down a little bit. I'm tightening it down hand tight just to keep the distributor from rotating, so that when I first start it, it won't it won't spin around. And then uh, I can loosen it and adjust the timing once I get it running. It should start up in this position. It's called static timing, not dynamic timing. So with static timing, all you're doing is setting the gross position of the distributor with the rest of the gear system. And like I say, it should start and run. It might not run great, but it, it should start up in this position. So this time I'm gonna uh, put the uh, distributor cap on it and uh, then the distributor, and then I'm gonna, well, put the distributor cap on it. I'm gonna install the ignition coil. The ignition coil is gonna be installed on the back surface of the cylinder head back here and then uh, I'll install the wiring. All right, I've got the ignition coil mounted on the back side of the cylinder head back here, and uh, I've checked the, the uh, install the coil wire temporarily just to make sure there's enough room or it's long enough to reach from the coil back up to the distributor, and it is. So at this time, all that's left is to connect the harness from the boat into the ignition module. So uh, the ignition coil, excuse me. The ignition coil harness comes with these two wires here. It's a white and a red. The red is 12 volts positive to your coil. And that, that connector also feeds 12 volts positive over to this uh, distributor, the module and the distributor through the, through the distributor harness. And then the white wire that you connect, um, the white wire connects your tachometer to, on your boat. So that's this, uh, so the two wires in, that are left in the boat are a purple and a gray. And they are right here and here, I think. So yeah, so here's your, these were the wires that were connected to your ignition module. It was the, the Thunderbolt ignition module. So I'm gonna cut the purple there and the gray there. I'm gonna connect the, the purple to red and the gray to the white, and it'll be done. I'm gonna cut off these uh, ring terminals and then uh, use uh, waterproof butt splices to do the rest of the work. And those, those are the only two wires you have to connect from the boat to the new ignition system, and that's it. The uh, harnesses that come with the coal and distributor to take care of everything else, very simple. So I'll do that now, and then the, the wiring will be complete, and uh, all that'll be left is to install the uh, the uh, spark plugs and the coal wires, and the ignition system will be done. All right, the wiring is done. Like I said, I got the the boat purple hooked up to the red, the new red on the new ignition coil, the boat gray hooked up to the white on the new ignition coil, and that's it for the power and the uh, tachometer. Uh, I'm going to take some uh, wire ties and tie these up a little bit so there's not quite as much uh, slack in these wires. Probably tie them off to the uh, power steering hose right there. But um, all that's left now is uh, this connector here is what you have to rig up to do your shift kill. I'm going to do the shift kill just like it's done on the four cylinder, three liter Merc Cruisers. You uh, have a four pin connector. Um, pins, uh, I think it's called E and R, are tied together. Um, actually, they're not. For uh, for the set timing, they're tied together, but when you're trying to do shift kill, you leave the pins E and R unconnected. And then pin uh, B, which is bypass, goes to 12 volts. 
and uh, your shift kill switches 12 volts to to uh, pin B right here and that's your shift kill um, so up here the shift kill will be mounted here and what I'm going to do is uh, I believe the wire that feeds this choke the wire that feeds the choke which is right here um, I believe it's some reason it's been tied off down there in the harness but I'm going to pick up 12 volts on there and go to the shift kill and then the other you know, I'm going to repurpose this this right here was the old shift kill it grounded and uh, I'm going to use this as the new shift kill going back here to my uh, terminal uh, B on the uh, terminal B on this connector here and I'll take care of shift kill okay to work out the shift kill harness I've taken this uh, four-way metric it's called a metro pack connector um, this is actually off an old fuel injection uh, idle control motor use the same connector so I've taken these two wires and put a male and female butt splice on here and then this other this longer wire is your bypass and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that in a second so this is your shift kill harness and the way it works is uh, when these two wire, when these two are left disconnected and you put 12 volts on this wire here, this longer wire, you'll kill the engine. If these two are connected and you put 12 volts on this wire, you'll be in set timing mode. So this connector serves as both a shift kill harness and also a set timing harness. And I'll show you, I'm going to use that in a second. But for now, I just want to show you the harness as it's made up. And uh, the terminals are, let's see, the wires you use are marked, uh, the C and D are the two that you tie together. The B is the bypass and A is not used. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in the distributor and then wire it into the, uh, the harness and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with the shift kill switch. Okay, I've got the uh, harness plugged into the distributor. As you can see, those two wires there are not connected. That will be shift kill. It will kill the ignition when, you, when you're when shift gears. This longer green wire, which is the bypass, is plugged into, this is the old ground for the shift kill. This wire here was the ground for the shift kill. And uh, the old shift kill, you grounded the ignition. With this one, you put 12 volts to it. So I'm re repurposing that wire, going to my bypass wire on my shift kill harness on the distributor. The other side of the shift kill is this wire here. This used to go to the distributor. I'm going to put 12 volts. I'm going to tap it into this fuel, fuel pump wire here, right here on this red wire, or possibly back here in the gray wire, I'm not sure. Um, but that's 12 volts to the fuel pump. So the fuel pump had 12 volts on it any time the engine's running. So you'll have 12 volts on this side of the shift kill switch, and then the other side will be switched to the distributor when you go into uh, when you're trying to shift gears, and that will effectively kill the ignition. So um, at this time, I'm gonna uh, crank it up, and then I'll show you how it works. This particular boat has an electric choke, and uh, somehow or for whatever reason, it's not connected. Um, can't remember if it was connected when I first tore this thing down or not. Um, but um, I'm gonna reconnect it, and to do that, I'm gonna use a water, waterproof splicing uh, connector, which I don't have any. I'll have to get it, get some from uh, Riley's. But uh, for now, I've just got the uh, this wire here. This wire here will be part of the shift kill. It'll be tied into the same 12 volts that I tie into here to go to the choke. So it'll be, I'll come off this gray wire, which is 12 volts, and go to the choke and go to the shift kill at the same time with one connector. But for the time being, I've just got this thing uh, hot wired back to the battery with an alligator clip. And I want to show you how the shift feels. All right, so with the engine running, like I said, I have 12 volts jumper to here for the time being. I'll fix that later. But right now, I've got 12 volts on this wire. It goes to your shift kill switch, and then that other the rest of the kill switch goes to your distributor. So all I have to do is push this down, push this lever down, and simulate a shift, and then we'll kill the engine. That's how the shift kill works. Okay, to wrap up this uh, EST upgrade, I've got the power coming off of the, the uh, choke feed, tapped off here, going to the shift kill switch, and then the other side shift kill switch goes to your distributor. And if you want to set timing, all you have to do is disconnect the shift kill, hook the two wires up, bypass the shift kill, and you'll be in set timing mode if you, if you connect these two together here. So if you buy a full, EST kit, you'll get two of these set timing type connectors. One is for set timing, one is for shift kill. But now you've got two tools, one of them you don't use, so you probably you lose it. So I like this way better. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you get a chance.